Okay, computing pi, the last part. So we've introduced parameter passing, we've introduced mathematical functions, and we've introduced memory management. Now all that's left is to actually compute pi. So for this, we're going to use uh, the formula for the area of a quarter of a circle. Um, so, and we can approximate the area by using the number of points inside the circle, using the formula you see uh, in the second bullet point here. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to um, offload the counting of the pixels inside the circle to the device, and we're going to do the integration in the end on the host. We will also measure the execution time. This is a quick and dirty way of doing some easy profiling by just calling uh, the steady clock from the C++ standard library. Oh, I've seen there's a small error here. So um, we're going to execute the kernel, but not using the uh, kernel exec function, but using the queue and queue function. So we first have to instantiate our kernel on the host side by just uh, creating this dummy variable here. And then we're going to create a task. This is done with the create task kernel function from the Alpaca API. We pass in our work division, so our grid basically. We pass in the uh, variable here, the pixel finder kernel. We pass in our accelerator buffers and we pass in our, uh, the radius. And this, with this created task, uh, we head to the queue and just uh, um, pass in the task to the queue. Then this will uh, result in the kernel running on the device. And afterwards, we can just copy back the results using the memview copy function. And then we just have to synchronize the device with the host using the wait wait function. You will wonder why we are using namespace alpaca here in this point. This is also because of some Mac issue we encountered yesterday. Apparently, wait is already defined in Mac's global namespace. So we have to explicitly call the alpaca namespace here. Otherwise, this will lead to compilation errors on macOS. After we've obtained the results and are back on the host, we first have to determine the number of points that are inside the circle. This is done by a simple for loop, and we just uh, it, uh, increase our counter every time we find a point that's inside the um, circle. Then we divide this by uh, not the radius, but by n. And uh, then we will, then we're at actually, at this point, we have obtained pi or an approximation of pi, and we'll measure the execution time again. And at the end, we can just print out pi and the execution time. And uh, yeah, we're basically done. So we've, uh, with this few steps, we have uh, approximated pi and uh, also in a in a couple of milliseconds. You can try this for yourself using the example in uh, uh, compute pi underscore lesson 26. This contains the full source code required to build and run uh, this example. So we're going to do this just now. And as you can see, this is not actually pi, but a approximation because we only have, I think, 10,000 points or so in this example, and we've uh, needed 20 milliseconds for this. So uh, as a homework, you can try to play around with the end value. It's defined at the source code as a constant, and you can uh, look at how this affects the precision of our approximated pi and also the execution time. And also, as a probably a bit more advanced homework, you could try to implement the kernel in a more generic way so that it works for any number of threads, blocks, and grids. There are a few hints here. And uh, if, if you run into trouble, don't worry. We're going to provide the solution for that tomorrow. 
and uh, you can also look for uh, some hints in the question and answer session from yesterday where we've uh, answered a question regarding the approach needed here. That's all I'm, I'll be saying for now. Um, are there any questions? Yes. Um, how do you navigate the documentation? So what I did, I just went to the Doxygen and entered square root, SQRT. And um, I know already the solution because you showed it. But to find it, you really have to know where to navigate. Because if you just enter square root, you get classes you don't want. You, can, you get math traits, which you don't want. And in the end, uh, if you click on the right thing and pick the last thing that is in the list, you get to alpaca math square root, which is the thing that you should be using. So can you give like, um, I don't know, a hint how to identify kind of the namespace at which you want to look, which shows you the things that you should call? Um, I think René is responsible for Simeon maybe for the documentation. Maybe he, you can jump in there. Or could you please repeat the question I was <laughs> uh, so, so the question is that the doxygen is hard to navigate, which is definitely true. Uh, we are now in the process of moving to read the docs, but uh, that's just started, so we have a security not there yet. Uh, so I guess the risk answer is to, to like when we fully move and move all the conditions there, it's hopefully all way more navigatable because of read the docs are much better than the pure oxygen. So I have another question as well. It um, was just on, um, does Alpaca support actually generating the random numbers on the device as well? Because I know that the, you know, certain vendors have specific random number libraries that are optimized for their hardware. Because I guess in this example, the slowest thing is probably generating all the random numbers to fill the array. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. So, and of course, since we all come, or at least like our side comes from scientific computing, we obviously need it in many cases to have uh, the random numbers on the device. That's why indeed Alpaca provides an abstraction for that. We will talk about that briefly in tomorrow's lesson. Uh, you could also look at the cheat sheet. So, so, so you can totally generate uh, random numbers on the device side with Alpaca. We have abstraction for that. Cool, thanks. I think if there's time, we also could maybe talk about it a few minutes on Friday. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, Fridays for questions, including this one, yeah. Okay. okay, any more questions? We have like two minutes left before people have to leave for the uh, GPU at CERN session. Okay, I guess not. Then uh, thanks for coming again today. And uh, I guess we'll see you tomorrow again.